Hello. Um, today we're going to be making uh, a bread called pao, uh, which is a bread that's eaten in India, uh, usually as a street food, and they're super yummy. So we're going to be following uh, the 12 steps in yeast dough production, uh, which are just the 12 main steps that you follow for any kind of a bread making recipe. Um, so it's going to be fun, and let's start. Okay, so before we start, uh, I just want to run through what the 12 steps are. Uh, the first one is scaling, second is mixing, then bulk ferment, folding, dividing, pre-shaping, bench resting, makeup or panning, proofing, scoring, baking, and then finally the last one is uh, cooling. So it's going to make a lot more sense as we go through uh, all of the different steps and how they come together to result in your final um, baked product. Okay, now we're ready to start with our actual baking process. Um, I'm going to be using a stand mixer today and I'll be using this attachment which is called the hook attachment. Um, the hook is what you usually use for any kind of a dough that you're mixing in your mixer. Uh, usually these kind of mixers come with uh, paddle attachments, whisk attachments, and the hook attachment. So the hook is always for dough. Okay, step number one is simply scaling your ingredients. That just means you have everything measured out and ready to go for your recipe. So I have my butter, salt, water, yeast, sugar, milk powder, flour, and my warmed milk all ready to go so we can start our next step which is going to be mixing. All right so now we're on to the next step which is mixing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my flour into my mixer, all of it, and I'm going to put my salt in there as well. The reason that I want to keep the salt and the flour together and away from the rest of the ingredients for now is because salt and yeast together uh, is not a good idea. Um, salt actually kills yeast, so we're gonna keep them separate for as long as possible here. Uh, next up, I'm gonna take my milk, which was warmed, and I'm gonna add my yeast to that. Okay, so I've let the yeast sit in the warm milk for a few seconds now. And I'm going to go ahead and add my milk powder and my sugar. Now I'll just combine those and then we're going to add it all into the flour and the salt mixture. Okay, so at this point, my dough is coming together, but it looks a bit dry, as you can see. So now I'm going to use that half a cup of water that I had put aside here, and I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. Just a bit at a time. Just to help the dough come together better. So when the dough has started to come together like this, and it's pretty soft, I'm gonna add the butter that we had put aside, and then continue mixing. Okay, so our dough is ready. It is super soft, really nice, soft. And all I did is just make a, a ball out of it, and now we're gonna put it into a bowl. I put a little bit of flour in the bottom of the bowl and we're just going to let it sit there for at least one hour for it to bulk ferment. So when we talk about the step uh, of bulk fermentation, all it means is a really long uh, rest for the dough. So I'm saying that it has to be one hour, um, even if it's two hours. Sometimes certain recipes call for a bulk fermentation of two hours. And uh, it's just a really good time for the bread to develop good flavor. And, um, and then we will do the next step after it doubles in size. So I just put a clean cloth on top of the bowl and I'm gonna let it rest on the counter for one hour. So 
So the next step um, would actually be folding, but we won't be folding uh, this particular recipe because it's not necessary for the bread that we're making. Um, but many other recipes will have you fold once or twice or sometimes three times, giving rests in between. And it just helps to redistribute the yeast um, within the dough to help it uh, find more sugar to eat and, and that kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. So we're going to be jumping straight into the step of dividing the dough. and divided it into 12 pieces, equal pieces. Uh, we're gonna just roll little balls of it like this. And then we're going to put it back into a pan that I've already prepared with just some oil in it. And then we're gonna let it bench rest for another 45 minutes. So now we're going to leave our dough like this um, for another 45 minutes uh, to double again in size. And we're already done the makeup and panning part of it because uh, we've already put it into our final pan here. So at this stage, um, this will be the final proof for the dough before we bake it. And um, I just want to mention the step called scoring. So in some recipes and with some styles of dough, you would do what's called scoring the bread. And it's kind of just making like a slash on the top of the bread. We won't be doing that because we're just making simple buns. Um, but many times the pattern that you see, like a leaf pattern or some kind of cut in the bread is called scoring the bread. And it's just done to help um, during the baking process in the oven. Okay, so finally, after 45 minutes of proofing, the buns are ready. They have doubled in size, and I'm just gonna do a simple egg wash on them before we put them into the oven to bake. All right, so the buns are in the oven. I'm closing it up, and I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then take a look at them. Um, they can bake for anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes really, uh, but we're going to check at 10 minutes. So the buns are out of the oven. They took around 25 minutes to bake, longer than I thought and I'm just drizzling them with some melted butter. And then I'm going to cover them with a cloth and let them cool. These buns that we made today are cooling in the pan for a few minutes after I put the butter on them. Um, but not all bread is cooled in that way. Some have to be removed from the pan um, just a few minutes after uh, resting and then cooled on, on a rack. Um, for these particular buns, because I want them to stay softer, um, I put the butter over top and then covered it with a cloth like this. And I'm going to remove them out of the pan after maybe five minutes. So the buns are done, they're ready, and they're beautiful. Just open one up. They're really soft, and they're perfectly cooked. I'm gonna enjoy mine with an omelet for dinner. That's how we like to eat it in India with this type of bread. So yeah, I hope you were able to um, get some new information about the 12 steps um, in yeast dough production. These steps can just be applied to any kind of breads that you're making, any recipes that you find online, 
and I would strongly encourage you to try out this recipe because they have turned out absolutely awesome. Thank you so much.